Hi, have you ever wondered what it would be like to build straight walls with Aircrete? Last year we did the video showing the start of Bruce and Susan's project building their house out of Aircrete with 12 inch thick walls. Today we're going to tour their progress. They've also built their own Aircrete machine, which allows them to produce high volumes of Aircrete and also with the perfect consistency. This allows just the two of them to build this entire house on their own. We're releasing a separate video coming soon of a detailed tour of their machine and how it works. So be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss that video. And let us know in the comments below if you have any follow-up questions. Thanks for watching. So we're in our second summer on our Aircrete build. We're building a, a vertical conventional house out of Aircrete. The walls are a foot thick. We're using a slip form system in order to, to do our forming. So we're pouring Aircrete in place rather than doing blocks and then moving blocks and stacking blocks. We need to add some strength to the Aircrete to stabilize the whole thing. To accomplish that, what we've actually started doing is we're using what's just essentially baling twine. There's baling twine every foot vertically that runs through this wall. And then there's also twine that's running horizontally. And what we figured out through this system, this actually ties the whole structure together vertically. And so what you can't see inside of here is there are actually concrete columns. There's a concrete column on either side of each window and then about every four feet in between windows. And then over the top of the wall, there will be a beam, a bond beam of concrete that ties the whole thing together. And we're really counting on those concrete posts to carry the weight of the roof, to help give us a little bit more shear in all of this. When we first started this build, lumber materials were very, very, very expensive. We needed to come up with a way to form this that allowed us to reuse material. And so we came upon the idea of doing a slip form. And so what we've got is just three quarter inch plywood, two foot high, inside and outside. And then that slip form, we pour about two feet and then we raise it up and we use these posts to support the slip form while we're doing it. And also we use these posts to have a, um, a block and tackle set up, which allows us to set a winch and use that to actually pick the form up and slide it into position. We typically will raise 20 inches with a two foot form that gives us enough on the bottom to make sure that we don't have leaks and then we don't quite pour all the way to the top. And then that 20 inches, we come back, we do two 10 inch pours inside of that. And so it takes us about two days to raise the form, stabilize it, get it ready to pour. And then we have two days to actually pour it full. So it's about a four day turnaround. The top of the form is held in place. There's cross pieces. If we were a little shorter <laughs> or a little taller, we could see it. But there's ties that hook the, the form together across the top of it. But once we get down here, we have these clamps or whatever you want to call it. And all it is is essentially a, a homemade bolt, just a piece of rebar with some threaded rod on the end of it and a washer. And there's another T on the outside of this that mates up with this one. All we do is run this through the wall, put that other T on, nut and, nut and washer on the other side. And then that clamps the bottom together so we don't get leakage out the bottom. Without that, there's, it would easily just run out. We do uh, oil our form uh, each time we raise it. Uh, we're just using whatever vegetable oil is inexpensive at the store. And then I've just got a small uh, paint roller and I use that to just spread it out, make sure I've got constant coverage. Inside of the form is covered with plastic wrapped. What we do is uh, at each time we raise it, we've got a pressure washer and I just do a quick knockoff. For this house, I really wanted to have that kind of uh, Southwest Santa Fe Adobe sort of look where the windows had kind of a deep well and angled into them. And in order to do that, we went ahead and, and made what we call a window buck. I don't know if there's a better term for it, but you can see here, the window will set out here to the, to the outside, and then we'll have this angled well going in. And so all it is is this uh, 
It's just made of plywood. They get screwed in between the form. We pulled these out this morning, but these just slide in when we get ready to pour and get held in place. We order all of our cement by the pallet for this project, and we've gone through at least 12 pallets so far on this project. And it's, we just have a lot of volume of aircrete in order to accomplish, you know, a 12 inch wall. It's about a 1400 square foot house. And some of the walls are nearly 15 feet tall. So there's quite a bit of volume involved here. With our budget and all of that, that we wanted to have a project that Susan and I could do together really all by ourselves and through the development of our pumping system and all of that and our slip form, Susan and I are able to do absolutely everything on this project. And, you know, we've had a little bit of help, uh, but by and large, you know, we've done everything. So this will, what will be our front door. So there'll be a ramp that, and stairs that come up around the outside to this side. This is the kitchen couple of windows out of here. This is our, our living room area here. This will be a door out onto a patio here. This will actually be a window. We'll pour it this high, but this provides us a nice big access into the house to move materials in and out. So we'll come back and pour this after the fact once we get the walls up. There will be a, a laundry room over in this area, laundry room, mudroom. This back area here is basically the bedroom wing. We've got a master bedroom, primary bedroom over here, second bedroom over here, and, a, and then one large bathroom on the back wall. Pretty limited house in many ways. I think it'll be very comfortable. As you can see by looking at the back wall here, you can see the curve in that and the angle here on the side. And what that lays out is a curved roof that curves this way, but also is angled up. And the roof construction is, we're, uh, we've got peeled poles uh, that we got through the Forest Service through firewood permits, essentially. And those will provide the start of that. And then underneath those poles, we'll actually build a truss that fits underneath those. That all should span pretty well. The roof will probably be about two feet thick, and so a lot of room for insulation in that. Hey, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe, stay tuned, join our mailing list if you wanna learn more about this type of information. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thanks a lot.